I tell people I retired in 2018 because 2018 was the last year that I uh, that I did anything I didn't want to do for money. Uh, and so now, um, you know, on calls like this all day, um, and I've never been on a call with another person like you, uh, entrepreneur or just passionate person on a, on a call like this and gotten off with less energy than when I got on. Thank you for being a devoted listener of this podcast, Beyond Clean with Ace dedicated to healthy, positive, and proactive content to support individuals primarily in the cleaning industry. Are you a facilities manager, a frontline staff member, or a building services contractor and are looking for knowledge that will help you advance both personally and professionally? Beyond Clean with Ace is now in season seven and speakers have consistently brought us messages which parallel our key focus of providing proactive knowledge. Many times the conversations here go beyond cleaning toilets, windows, and floors, and helping individuals on a personal level. Subscribe and share with others so that everyone's life can be enhanced in healthy, positive, and proactive ways. And now, let's join Dave Thompson, Director of the Academy of Cleaning Excellence and your host here at Beyond Clean with ACE. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Thompson, your host here at Beyond Clean with Ace, where the cleaning industry talks. And as you already know, we don't talk just about cleaning. That's why the title is the way it is, folks. But you might have noticed I've got my hat on today. It's a little cool here in Florida. And wouldn't you know it, the heat doesn't work in the uh, classroom today. So I'm a little cool, but not everybody uh, has that issue because not everybody's over here, supposedly in the warm weather. Um, my guest today, I do not think shares the same problem that I have today. Uh, I would say, Jason, that uh, you're probably used to a little cooler weather than I am here in Florida. You know, I think that's probably a fair statement. I, uh, I live up here in the, the Indiana Dunes outside of Chicago, uh, and it's a, a beautiful beach town, but in the winter it gets pretty dark, or pretty cold and pretty dark, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we didn't come on here to talk just about uh, cleaning or the weather, folks. Um, Jason, um, give us a little bit of background and why are we talking to Jason today? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, um, so for starters, I'm an Army veteran uh, coming out of school. I went to the U.S. Army for, for four years, had two deployments uh, overseas. Uh, and in that time, uh, I learned a good deal about cleaning, so I'm certain that we can tap into that. <laughs> As we go, um, most Lord, anybody in the army, uh, they, they learned yeah. about cleaning, but it's not the same cleaning I do today. Oh yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, when I got out of the military, I did two things at the same time. I went to school for finance in Chicago, uh, to, to become a banker. And I also started a CrossFit gym on a dusty fourth floor of a old warehouse, uh, in the, in downtown Chicago. Um, and over the years, I noticed that I was, I was working in $50 million deals, $20 million deals, and all I could think about was this small CrossFit gym in our community. So I uh, ended up becoming a full-time entrepreneur, uh, dedicating myself to that, um, and uh, over the course of time, fell in love with not just uh, the fitness industry, but also building tribe. Uh, and so um, now I do that with other entrepreneurs. Uh, so I've, I've sold my, most of my ownership in the, the gym. Uh, and I help entrepreneurs and, and other folks that have uh, big, you know, purposes, causes, or passions uh, to to get the to get more impact on the world by kind of learning how to structure their businesses or, or their endeavors. Yeah, you know, there's a number of things you just mentioned in that there, Jason, that I could just go all the way with. That it's like, yeah. you know, what one of my friends just this weekend he got started with CrossFit training. Yeah. Because his wife has been into it, and I, I got a text from him over the weekend. Goes, blessed, 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 sore. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. Yeah. So you, you know, you you went you, you went to the military, went to banking and CrossFit. Now you're not doing any of that. No, you know, I, I tell people I retired in 2018 because 2018 was the last year that I uh, that I did anything I didn't want to do for money, uh, and so now, um, you know, on calls like this all day. Um, and I've never been on a call with another person like you, uh, entrepreneur or just passionate person on a, on a call like this and gotten off with less energy than when I got on, uh, this, uh, this, know, and that's why we do podcasting, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I've fallen in love with podcasting. Um, it's certainly, uh, being a podcaster 
is certainly not going to be the biggest revenue generating thing for me in my life, certainly. <laughs> but but genuinely, I just I just love the art form. I've, I've grown up, as we talked about off mic, uh, I, I've grown up listening to talk radio first when I was a young man or young boy, really, uh, then eventually finding audio books when I was in the military. And then now, obviously, podcasts for the last, you know, dozen or so years. So there's some people that just never have done podcasting and might be listening to this for the first time. So yeah. how do you equate podcasting then with the, those early talk radio? I mean, what's the difference? That's a good question. I think that it's uh, when I think of this medium and actually, you know, Dave, when I think of a lot of things that I'm drawn to, I think of one word and that word is truth uh, is uh, whether it's podcasting, it's just two people having a conversation. There's not a producer in your ear, typically, at least in the type of podcasts I enjoy. There's not a podcast or a producer in your ear. There's if there is sponsorships, they're usually very aligned and they're chosen by the host. Um, and so you have these conversations that are very real. Uh, with people that maybe weren't selected to be famous or aren't, you know, uh, action stars or athletes or anything like that. And so you get this really, I think, rich um, entertainment, uh, uh, education, uh, conversation. And I, I just I just love it so much. And growing up on I don't know if you know who Art Bell is, but Art Bell, I used to sneak and listen to my my radio at night when I was a kid. And Art oh, Bell was had a transistor, a right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to crank it on the yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, I didn't and, go back that far. No, I wasn't trying to go that far. Yeah, no, but he he would talk about aliens and time travel and all this stuff that was insane. But there was just one thing. It was it was purely him. It was unique to him, just like your show is is unique to you, Dave. And uh, I just get a kick out of that, man. I feel like you get to know the the people in so much more of a real way. And I think that the world is kind of feeling that way right now. You know, I think there's a number of people that I send out information and we're, we're all on a list somewhere. You know, if you're a podcaster, you've been doing it for a while, folks, you're, you're on a podcasting list somewhere. I happen to be on three and that's how we find each other. And, and we share these things, but they say, I don't know anything about cleaning. I'm like, you don't have to know anything about cleaning because yeah. everybody does it sometime in their life or has, yeah. uh, whether it be, you know, private or commercial, but people in the cleaning industry do have lives. Oh, absolutely. And, and frankly, those people in the cleaning industry have the same challenges that people that are entrepreneurs have, whether or not they own their companies, they have the same challenges that, you know, lawyers have or, or anything else. We're just people trying to balance what we do professionally with our family and social lives and our, our personal lives, how we feel about ourselves and, and where we are in the universe, man. Uh, and that and balance has changed a lot because of the last two years. Uh, yeah. That work-life balance has changed and there's more people I think in podcasting now than there was three years ago. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And frankly, there's more people that are, I think it used to be that if you were going to be an entrepreneur, you had to be that person who was going to go very, very hard against the grain. Uh, if you're going to start a podcast or be an artist or start a band, you basically had to go through a wall of no's. And I think technology and to some extent culture has made it easy enough to have a side hustle or a gig or start your own thing uh, to where now I'm finding that I interview folks that never thought of themselves as entrepreneurs and have found a ton of success um, just by pursuing their passions. Now, you mentioned interview, you know, and I find that this is the way I try to do this with my podcast is, you know, because a, a number of people that want to come on go, well, I'm not sure about it. You know, the first thing is a cleaning issue. Okay, we co yeah. covered that. But then the thing is, you know, I like the fact this is just a discussion, two guys talking rather mm -hmm. than an interview uh, with all of this. Like you said, there's no, folks, there's no microphone in my ear. I got to tell you that. No. Yeah. And I'm the same way. I, I, I prepare in the sense that I like to know who I'm talking to, sure. but I don't have, I don't work from a list of questions or anything like that. And frankly, I found that, um, being a podcaster has made me a much better listener and a much better friend, probably a better husband. Um, <laughs> Because I'm actually, I, in order to put out a good product, I think maybe it's because you know other people are going to listen to this. And so in order to be able to put out a good podcast, it's important that I actually am listening to you when you talk, which you're doing a really good job of right now, candidly. Uh, and, and then I'm, re I'm responding to that. Because if somebody else hears you, you know, essentially just reading from a script, um, that comes through as very inauthentic. And I think it makes for a bad podcast. And I, and I think you're exactly right in this, Jason, is because if you don't have a script and you don't have that list of things in front of you right over, and I got a TV right over here, but you know, yeah. it's, it's like, 
you have to listen to what it is so that you know mm -hmm. what you're talking about because that's what you do in a discussion. Yeah. You know, if you're around the campfire, you know, here in Florida where it's nice and cool at 50 degrees, yeah. uh, you know, you got to listen to the other people so that you can join in the conversation. Mm -hmm. That art has been lost. Well, and I would even take that a step further, Dave, and say that the art of conversating where you're listening and not just waiting for someone to talk, even in person, is is difficult to find sometimes. I don't know if it's lost or not, but uh, I find that even in myself, since I started podcasting, I catch myself in just regular day-to-day -day conversation um, you know, thinking more about what I want to say than what I'm listening to. And, and I've, I'm happy to say that I think it's get, gotten a lot better uh, because of the, the art form because of pod, podcast, podcasting. Well, you know, the one thing that I had to kind of break is, is I like things live. I'm just, that's the way I am. I don't like recorded, but uh, yeah. you know, folks, I got to tell you, we're recording this because it, technology sometimes doesn't really, it isn't conducive to live all the time. That's sure. just what we're going to say. So yes, this is recorded. We try to do the best we can. But I still do a live show every week on Monday afternoons. And you know what? Every once in a while, there's a glitch. And it just happens. Um, I really do like that live conversation when somebody is really paying attention. I think I've been in sales all my life. And I think that was one of the things that sales did for me is you had to really... I know that when you go into sales, folks, and we're talking entrepreneurship this afternoon, but... You have to listen, even though you have an agenda, even though you have something that you want to present, what is on the customer's mind is more important than what you've got to say. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, empathy isn't thinking that who you're talking to is right. It's thinking, it's understanding that they believe that they're right. And so if you want to be good at sales, it behooves you to find a way to sit shoulder to shoulder with them instead of face to face, you know? And isn't that what conversations do? Well, I should say honest ones. Yeah. Or even, you know, frankly, even honest ones where we disagree, um, a lot of times you can still find common ground, right? Um, well, I didn't are... say I had to agree with you, Jason, to have yeah. a conversation. I... <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I find, um, uh, I, I recently heard a quote and I can't recall who said it, but it was, it was a famous person in history. And they were saying how good people um, get along with most people. Great people find a way to get along with everyone. And I think that that's, um, I think that it's because if you listen and if you have some grace and you are from a position of strength, you can find common ground with anybody and, and you don't necessarily let small things drag you down into the muck or whatever. Okay. So you have a podcast yourself. Yeah. What's the main focus of your podcast? Let's go there. Yeah, so the Spear and Clover podcast is, uh, we talk to renegade entrepreneurs. We talk to people who bet bet it all on themselves, who created their businesses out of passion, very much as I have. Um, I like to say that uh, I serve magicians. These are people that have magic between their ears, that they have broken down all the barriers, uh, and they've, uh, they've pushed through out of passion. They have a, a vision, they see the world as it could be, and they can't help but take action. Um, and so I have... Uh, every single week we have a conversation typically with an entrepreneur, uh, but not always. I've, I have an executive chef that we've had on named John Lynch, uh, who, you know, gave up being the face of three different restaurants to live in a van and travel the country for a year and a half. Uh, and that was one of my more interesting conversations. So they're not always entrepreneurs, but they're always people who are not only pursuing very, very hard things, but they're also enjoying life while they do. That's sort of what the, the Spear and Clover logo stands for is pursuing those things that are important to us. Those the, are the mission that we're on, but also taking time to enjoy life, to, to have a healthy life and, and a fun life while we do. You know, and I think, you know, being an entrepreneur can be difficult, but it can be easy depending on what you're, what you're listening to mm. uh, or whom, you know, there's a lot of people with advice out there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very hard sometimes to weed through. Do you find that true? I do. Uh, I would say that in general, if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking for mentorship or guidance, um, I would pick 
I would choose those people that sell questions more than answers. I think that um, entrepreneurs are where they are because they have a unique vision for something to impact the world, whether it's a, a, a gym or a cleaning business or a law firm, it doesn't really matter. Um, and so when you're looking for help, you really are looking for someone who sells you the right questions to draw out of you how you should run your business. Uh, when people tell you that they have the one answer for everybody, a lot of times that's not the case or it's short term. You know, somebody may have a certain marketing play or something that can work right now and the algorithm or whatever, but in general, long-term success is, is built on the entrepreneur sort of taking the time to answer those questions that his business is going to, his or her business is going to ask of them on a day-to-day -day basis. It's interesting you should say that, Jason, because uh, many years ago, back in my younger days, and for folks, the hat's on here for more than one reason, you can't stand <laughs> the glare. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, mine's a lot. Hey, Jason, I don't want to do that to anybody. We're on different um, spots of the same trail, buddy. I get it. <laughs> I'm just a little further along than you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you know, the thing here is, is I, I rode with a gentleman that the boss said, and he said, this guy's got all the answers. I came back, said it was the most boring, worthless day I'd had. <laughs> and the guy looked at my boss and said, the young man just didn't ask the right question. Yeah. And, and that's, I think at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's, that's what we all kind of encounter. Um, and, and so I think right now it's, it's hard to know who to trust. We're inundated with, with, with a million different options with technology, the way that it is and podcasts and things that are for sale on social media or whatever. And that's where I think, you know, the best thing to do is rely on the words of folks that we know personally, that that's how I find, you know, my new podcasts that I listen to. That's how I find mentorship. That's how I find most of my clients is, is through being connected through, you know, trusted friends and, and people that I've developed real relationships with, which is why, you know, I wish the word networking didn't have so much weight already to it. But oh, when I say that word, I really mean I'm creating a network of people who I know, you know, some of whom have been to my house and, and had dinner. Uh, and, and I know that if I lead with service to them, uh, and, and help them in any way that I can, that there are going to be times where I'm going to need help as well, and they're going to be more than happy to provide it. You know, Mickey Anderson, who is a regular on our podcast uh, every month, uh, her and I were talking about this on the podcast that actually just dropped this morning. And one of the things that she was talking about is that networking issue that you've just brought up. And her and a colleague went to an, an event, and his version of networking was, how many people can I hand my card to? Yeah. And Mickey was saying, no, 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 no. I, I only brought 10 cards. I want to have 10 good conversations. So yeah. I think everybody has a different version of what networking is still today. I agree. I just got back from uh, a summit over the weekend in Dallas. Um, and uh, I had a wonderful time. I met probably 20 people and, and developed like maybe not full on friendships, but certainly relationships. I, I had conversations about, you know, their lives, their children, what do they do for a living? Why do they enjoy it? Um, and the last thing on my mind was telling them about my program or, you know, something or asking them for a favor or anything like that. Um, what I find is if you're willing to, I mean, as a, and I think this is where podcasting has really sharpened the sword for me, is I'm willing to dive into conversation with so many different people at this point that it's easier because I do it so often, as do you, it's easier for me to strike up a very casual, very comfortable conversation and actually listen and, and provide some feedback or insightful questions and develop relationships. Um, and I think I'm sure you would agree that podcasting and sales, good sales, uh, has, has really developed my ability authentically to develop relationships that are meaningful and, and enriched. I think people that are moving forward, I mean, you know, here we are just starting 23, but people that are actually moving forward and, and, and that's what I like to keep doing. I mean, you know, I have no problem, folks. If you've listened to the podcast before, you know I'm 65. I have no problem with that. I love my age. I love that I've got to here. But still, I have to keep pushing myself more now than ever before uh, because as you grow older, things go away. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like that muscle if you don't use it. Um, and I think that talking with different people like yourself because I'm not out on the street anymore, knocking on the door, selling toilet paper and, and floor mops, you know? Right, right. So having exchanges of information like this with all kinds of cultures, of all kinds of, 
I mean, over seven years, I've, it, it's literally hundreds of people I've talked with all over the world mm -hmm. that I would never have the chance to selling toilet paper here in Florida. Yeah, I mean, we we ran a gym in Chicago with 300 plus members. I saw those people every single day, all the time. When 2020 hit, not only uh, did the gym sh get shut down during COVID, <laughs> but I also, I sold the majority of my equity in that business. And I moved to Indiana to a rural beach community in Northwest Indiana. And so this is my is my primary source of engagement with the world at this point. I mean, I go to my jujitsu gym, but uh, you know, it's not the same. It, it's fantastic, but, but it's not, it's not my, you know, it's not the same thing. This is, this is um, definitely my way to, to get that juice, that feeling of talking to other entrepreneurs, other people that are struggling to, to self-improve, to get better, to build something. Uh, this is where I find my, my outlet for that. So I thank you for that, by the way, Dave. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and Jason, I, I love what you said because, you know, I, I can be on a podcast with one person in Nebraska, and mm -hmm. then I just won't, I'll remember this one like last month, and then I jumped to a podcast with a guy in Spain. Yeah. And, yeah. and the best one of my year last year, you know, you always have these ones that kind of stick out, and I've said this before, uh, folks, but i never never been to the circus. And I had a guy that say, hey, yeah, I want to talk, but you need to come over here and so I went on location with him and I went to the circus and did a podcast from there. It wow. was cool. That was cool. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and, the guy, and, and the guy actually hand letters all of the graphics on everything. Oh, like the painting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, that's cool. By hand with a paintbrush yeah. by hand. That's a dying um, art. Yeah. That's amazing. And, 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 and somebody said, well, he's got to have the stencil up there. He actually creates the stencils freehand. There's no wow. computer. There's nothing like that. It's a dying art. And yeah. you, you take that dying art, you put it with the circus. And it, I mean, it was a podcast. I, I didn't ever, I didn't ever had the opportunity to do that before. Wow. That's so fascinating. I, I always wonder about that. Like uh, there's these people that do calligraphy. So they'll do like really fancy gift cards or they'll do, yep. you know, wedding invites or, or the people that do the gold leaf for like oh, yeah. uh, the office doors and stuff. I feel like that is a, it's a dying art, these artisan type crafts. Well, Jason, you got to go on our podcast, Beyond Clean with Ace. Go there. You'll find it. It was uh, one of the last ones we did for 22, folks. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that we did this year is we went to actually doing these like we're doing today, where we're doing both the audio and the video, because we find that more and more people are watching rather than just listening. Uh, have you... Have you experienced the same thing with your podcast? You know, um, we have about we have we have quite a few less subscribers on YouTube than we do on our um, other platforms. However, what I did find was because I wanted to share it on social media, I, I, we pull clips from it, we pull quotes from it, and so because of that. And we're using Zoom anyway. I personally use Zoom anyway, so I have the video file. Um, it just seemed like a like it was a you know it was such a good synergy to just have it, and then we could chop it up and, and put it out so it's it's only a small effort to to clean up the video for for production for me and you know the, this uh the way you do it here with Streamyard, it seems like i just love you have the 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 scroll at the bottom this is already sort of produced um and so yeah this this to me i think that this is a great example of where technology is making this easier right either this would be quite a bit of work if you had to add all this stuff after the fact well, and that's why I'm using StreamYard. I was using Zoom, and then somebody turned me on to this. And, and uh, uh, last April, we did a totally virtual conference uh, here cool. on StreamYard using StreamYard. So I got a lot of experience with it, and I go, wait a minute. Uh, and, but Zoom still has its place uh, because, you know, I can only have six people on the panel at one time. So there, every I think technology has its place, and... That's the thing with any entrepreneur these days. You've got to learn all of this technology. Yeah, and it seems like, um, I don't know if you've experimented much with uh, like chat GPT or any of the AI stuff that's coming out, but that I think is going to be what the iPhone was for smartphones, uh, where, you know, previously there were camera phones and smartphones, but you had to be a kind of a tech person to use them. And then came along, you know, the Steve Jobs iPhone and kind of anybody could pick it up and kind of understand how it should work. 
in my experience, actually, ChatGPT kind of is bringing that experience where I don't know how to code, but if I go in there and ask the right prompts, I can create an app, um, like a simple app, but I think that's going to get better and better. <laughs> um, but I can create I You can app. create one, you know, that's the... Yeah, and it gives me the code. I can just drop it right in. And so I think that very quickly, I think we're going to see um, a lot more accessibility to a lot more things that previously would have been unheard of. And so, you know... I, I do think that you're going to see people of all ages and of all backgrounds, regardless of whether they have, you know, tech backgrounds, starting to be free to be a lot more creative because the barriers are going to be brought down. You can just use prompts instead of needing to learn a whole language or something. And I think that's kind of what that that COVID did for us, because there's always a silver lining in all kinds of situations if you're oh, looking yeah. for it. Uh, and and it made all of us look past that brick and mortar wall that we all had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it was interesting as you, as we talk about this, I read something today, of course, being in the cleaning industry, I read all of these kind of things, but you know, where um, some organizations, and I'm just going to leave it at that folks, you'll have to check out all of your feeds to find out who I'm talking about here. But some organizations are now saying they're requiring people to come to the place of business, brick and mortar, five days a week, mm -hmm. people pushing back. And then they're saying, well, we can't do this. And one of the companies wouldn't provide cleaning services that they wanted. Some people were finding they had to bring toilet paper from home. Um, you know, so I think there's these challenges that we're going to face as we move this year. But as you said, Jason, the technology is now expanding other opportunities that nobody would have ever had. And you mentioned AI. I just took a course in what is the metaverse. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. I uh, I also went from brick and mortar pre-2020 owning a gym. Uh, I had started coaching other entrepreneurs then, um, but really converted to full-time coaching other entrepreneurs during that time. Um, and what I would say is employee values have just changed, whether we like it or not, or whether it was COVID or just a fast forward button on what was already happening in our culture. You know, if your job can be done from home, the value of that now far exceeds a number that you can write down on their paycheck. I I've just seen, you know, I work with entrepreneurs, dozens of entrepreneurs, and the number one question used to be, uh, how do I find more clients? And that's certainly still a high question, but the number one question that I see in and, in and out, over and over again, on podcasts, in, in employ, uh, client meetings, is how do I find employees that will stay for the long term? Uh, I keep offering them more money and they keep quitting. And the answer is, is that you have to make jobs that they want to do, that they get energy from doing. And then you have to find folks that get energy from doing those things that you need done. And I mean, even cleaning, because one of the examples that I give of that is I'll never forget Mike Fernandez, one of my first uh, hires uh, back in the day in the gym, used to love using the, 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 the floor cleaner for the gym. He would love it. And he would come over to me. I never forget this. And he'd be like, man, he sounded like a psychopath. He'd be like, man, I love watching the dirt disappear up into the vacuum. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. I don't feel that way. But I'm so happy that you do. And so he would come in and he would work his own hours. He would throw his headphones in and listen to music or a podcast. And he would he would do it. I'd see the little uh, alert that somebody showed up at two in the morning sometimes. And sure enough, the next morning that floor was clean. And so I think he was proof that you can always find somebody uh, as long as you treat them well and you give them, you know, the opportunity that they're looking for. You can always find somebody who who enjoys doing the work that you need done. So, Jason, I would say that a lot of this was happening before COVID, but nobody was waking up to that. It just mm -hmm. made us wake up. I don't think COVID changed it. It just made us become aware and gave us the opportunity. A am I wrong? No, I, I think you're totally right. I think that the... Uh, the Industrial Revolution brought about this eight-hour workday, this uh, working towards more and more salary, working towards uh, pensions or retirement funds. And we've just seen that institution crumbling for probably a few dozen years, if you've been paying attention, as the, you know, the United Auto Workers you know, defaulted on things. And it, just a number of things have been happening. And so the the concept of working a 40 hour work week in order to get a pension and X amount of days off, the, 
the other side of that bargain was not being fulfilled. And I think technology and cultural changes have really realigned employees' um, values to a point where, in my opinion, you know, a CrossFit gym owner, it becomes an expert in one thing, and that is employing a professional team of people who don't make a lot of money. And so we had to structure our jobs and our training and our, our, our entire staff to be almost as if they would do the job for free if they could. You know, we were very loving and kind uh, to our to our uh, our employees. We only employed people who really wanted to change our clients' lives. And then because of that, you know, certainly we we paid them as much as we could. But you know, we were we we were getting a much more. I mean, those people even after two years of me selling the business two years ago, many of those people are still there because their core value fits and they believe in what they're doing. And I think that's what's going to happen as we go forward, Jason, unless I miss my guess. We're going to get much more loyalty than what we had before. Um, I remember a time where, you know, people didn't change jobs like water. Yeah, then I mean, it became, then it became that way. And maybe we're going to find a happy medium now. Yeah, I think if I had to guess, and I can't say this for sure, Dave, but if I had to guess, I would say back in the day, you know, people were sold the dream. And so because of that, your boss could treat you badly as long as the benefits were right and the stability was right and, and the paycheck was right. Then there was a time where, you know, that they they weren't treated. Now that we're not treating people badly, we can't. We have to put them in a situation where they enjoy this work because the, the generation before them was not taken care of as much as they should have been, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, I haven't changed jobs a lot, but I've been lucky to find the uh, positions and the places. But even at that, I was in sales, but I ran my own territory. I did my own thing. So I was, I, I, you know, I was an entrepreneur, but I yeah. did have somebody that I reported to. Yeah. But I think that's what, um, luckily, I have been able to find those through my careers. However, not everybody's been that fortunate. Well, I think in general, I think if you can give employees a few things uh, in any role, I think you're going to get it. I think sales happens to be one that is more favorable to this, but right. I think you need to have some autonomy. So a salesperson typically has a lot of control over their schedule and how they get things done. You need right. to have the ability to evolve and progress. Certainly salespeople have that. They can, they can get better at what they're doing. They can develop their network. They can make more money. They have the ability to not necessarily have ceilings or caps on what they earn. And there's just, there's always a feeling of you're going forward. But I, I like to think of those people that are in an organization where you know, let's say a government organization where it's like, well, without a certain degree, you cannot move up, you cannot right, move left right. or right. This is just what it's going to be. And 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 when you can plan out the next 30 years on a, on a timeline like that, you know, that's why I left the military, Dave, is, you know, I, I got exactly what I needed out of it, but I could see where it was going. <laughs> you used it for what it was good for. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong. They used me for what I was good for, I'm sure. I, I was going to say, I think yeah. that was, there, you know, and, and, you know, I've always said this too, Jason. We let things happen to us. We have the ability to stop it. It may not be comfortable, but we still have that ability to stop that. And that's what you did. You left it. You went on. Um, the using will happen no matter where you're at. I agree. Um, I think that putting yourself in a position to be able to act on your own behalf, I think is important. Finding an organization where they're open. Like, so for instance, for me, I've always felt this way, uh, even since before the military, and I carry this on to my employees. And that is, I believe that the, the job needs to get done. If it gets done in 45 minutes or it gets done in four and a half hours, I totally don't care. And if you can get it done from home, or if you can get it done from an office, I also am totally agnostic. And so because of that, um, I don't, I don't, I, I my sister right now is going through something where her, her boss doesn't like how she, how the new generation communicates, but she's uh -huh. the number one salesperson in the organization. She's like 32 and she's just crushing this, this organization. She leads it every single month and every single month he complains about, you know, her not doing it the way that he wants it done, but the numbers just keep going up and up. And I think sales is one of the few places, Dave, where, where that has been a longer standing thing, but certainly now, you know, you can't be you know, we're, there's not a whole lot of like reverence for, uh, for the way things used to be in, in a, in a business that's trying to grow in this environment. Yeah, Jason, I think you've been listening to some of my history, haven't you? 
I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, Hey, whenever I moved down here and started the Academy and started doing this down here, my boss, uh, there in Missouri, he said, you know, he said, well, why are you leaving? I said, you gave me a reason to, Oh, that's, that's true, man. I get and his reason mean. to give me was he didn't like the fact that I was doing education instead of selling toilet paper, yeah. but I sold, you know, uh, a million and a million three the last time I, last year I was there. Wow. And the next person next to me did 300,000. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, I'm like, okay, so why were you not, why were you upset about the fact I wasn't doing selling another case of toilet paper, making the 14th call of the day when that's what I was doing now and what you have left. And I think that's the change you're, that is still going on. Now for mm -hmm. me, it happened seven years ago. Yeah, I think I think it, this all sort of boils down to the same thing. And that is, I think traditionally corporate to get through a corporate environment required you to have like this fiefdom with control and, and you had to assert control over your employees. And I think now those that's if someone tries to do that, people just leave. They move on because that's not a requirement anymore. And And these days, it's much more about are you producing? And if you're producing. That should be it. If that's what you need. I mean, I just think that American values particularly have shifted, uh, particularly on a, in a generational basis. Uh, the folks that are younger than me, especially, just will not tolerate uh, anything outside of what they view to be the job. And so if it's how your hair looks or whether you have a nose ring or face tattoos, like they, as long as they're getting the job done, you know, to them, I think that this is, and I don't know that I agree with all that necessarily, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying, but, but really, you know, I, I, I can tell you from experience, you know, um, the employee, I think has woken up to how much power they actually have in these relationships. And because of that, you know, they're taking advantage of that. So people do have the ability to change their direction in life. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Uh, but I will tell you that the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And so if you're sitting out there listening to this right now and you're barely scraping by in a job that you don't like, it's unlikely you would be successful in a job you did like unless you change yourself and your behavior. That, that I've seen just play out so many times. Uh, and we're you know, never too old to change, folks. Absolutely. I mean, you know, hey, uh, seven years ago, I uh, was in my, you know, late 50s. I uprooted my whole career making a six-figure income and said, it's time to move. Life needs a change. And uh, I don't make a, a six-figure income anymore, but I'm happy and I'm productive. And as you said, I have control of my destiny. And I think that's where you took control of it when you left those things. So where is Jason going now? That's a good question. Uh, well, Dave, I, I've started a company, um, but really it's a tribe. Uh, it's a, we have a mastermind. We have a course for entrepreneurs, uh, the Spear and Clover Mastermind. The goal is to build a digital city of problem solvers, is to have a thousand entrepreneurs that can help each other solve their problems and overcome things using economies of scale that are usually reserved for big corporations, but for individual entrepreneurs with smaller and medium-sized teams. Uh, and so what we do is we bring in expert guest speakers. Uh, the bigger we get, the bigger the guest speakers will be able to bring. Uh, we, we then have small group masterminding where we help each other through our problems. Uh, I think that everyone should be working with a mentor, should be masterminding with peers, and should also be helping mentor the folks that are behind them on the path. Uh, and so we try to embody that. We try to... Um, we're trying to build a community of, of virtuous entrepreneurs, building their vision uh, and helping each other to do that. You know, there's only one problem I have with your virtual city. Yeah. I can't clean it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah. you're not going to use any of my toilet paper and I can't come clean your floors. How am I, I going to clean my, I got to clean my room. I got to clean my backdrop, my, my literal city. <laughs> oh, you see, you know, this is what I always say, you know, cleaning is going to happen no matter where you're at. We yeah. may not be cleaning the same environments, but it, you know, even at that, you're still going to get away from that digital world. You're still going to go out in the community and, uh, you know, uh, no matter where in the world I'm talking with, cleaning happens. And uh, the, the mentality of being healthy, positive and proactive 
our three words we like on our podcast here is, is truly where I'm at in my life now. I, I need to be healthy. Health is, you know, in the last two years proved all of that to all of us. Yeah, I would add that I think that probably people are cleaning a heck of a lot more in between Zoom calls from home than they would have been just going to an office and leaving, right? Uh, you know, I, most of us don't have cleaning ladies, so so I, we're we're doing we're doing about ten times the dishes now and about ten times the vacuuming and, and cleaning that we used to. Well, we're at home and we're now appreciating, and I think that's some of what I'm also hearing, um, is Jason. Some people are going, "Wow." I, I really appreciate what they used to do. And, and I think when they go to the office now, they're probably being a little bit better because I think the other thing I'm seeing from the commercial cleaning side is that you have shared workspaces. And so because uh, somebody may be on a split schedule where they're only coming in for two days and somebody else uses that desk for two days, mm -hmm. we have to be a little bit uh, more tidy. Yeah. 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 I haven't experienced that myself, but I do know some folks that do. Um, I think, I mean, cleaning is going to be impacted by commercial real estate in the terms you're talking about, right? So right. cleaning can be impacted with commercial real estate, commercial real estate. I think right now is just in a coma trying to pretend like it's not changing as much as it is uh, because on both sides you have, you have uh, you know, stakeholders that need it to not be the reality. You have right. people that own these buildings that are like, it's worth a million dollars. And you're like, no, it's not. Nobody needs to be here anymore. It's worth nothing. <laughs> they're, right. they're, they're not, they're not coming and here. On the other, yeah. On the other side, they're like, I don't, I don't need this anymore. And so I'm very curious to see what happens to not just the real estate, but the cleaning crews and the infrastructure and the plumbers and the steel manufacturers and all of that. Um, when cities like Chicago or Boston or, you know, even Nashville or Denver, when those places are no longer, you know, the centers of commerce that they maybe once were, I think probably LA and New York will remain uh, pretty heavily industrial, but I'm wondering what's going to happen there. Because if you don't need to live there, why would I pay $5,000 a month to live there? Well, I think you're right in a way. And I think that what happened in 22, we saw things coming out of and I don't think we've seen the reality of it yet. I think this year will be that pivotal year where we'll see how much of what you're, you're saying, like the commercial real estate, how much that's really going to affect long term. We have a, we have a way of repurposing things, but it takes time for us mm -hmm. to figure out how to repurpose and move to the next you know, even uh, you know, I was taking a course on what the what the metaverse is, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm thinking here is they still need a facility to do this AI in. They still need a facility to set this up to have that open space. Um, I was watching a movie with my wife the other night, and we were picking up the fact that that's a drone that was w going through and taking all of this. The movie set for that drone to go through has got to be massive. Mm -hmm. So some of these buildings that weren't used, that are not being used in their typical way, are now finding themselves being repurposed over into this AI technology. Folks, if you're not with it and you're not listening, here you are on the podcast. We're talking about what's going to be the next wave. Yeah, I agree. I think also, you know, there's a lot of talk about people are converting, you know, shopping malls in major suburbs, they're converting them into indoor farms, they're converting them into, you know, hydroponic farms and things like that. Uh, high rises, a lot of the, there's a lot of talk about uh, private equity swooping in buying these high rises and converting them more into living as opposed to office space. Um, but I do think that the, the median prices will have to come down, because ultimately, you have to like, you need to <laughs> under no matter how old school the boss is they're not going to pay a million dollars a month to to own a, a a high rise when they could when their employees don't want to be there and they don't need it for the product they'd yeah, rather just keep that money i mean i don't see why they wouldn't uh and so you know unless you're an investment banking team where there's like some reason why we need to be in the same room all the time um you know for the most part i think it's just gonna i think it's gonna start to shift and you're gonna see that spread um I think a lot of folks are going to leave at least tier one cities for more affordable cities and suburbs. So before I let you go today, what, what do you envision 23 to be like for, for Jason and your uh, spear and clover? 
Man, we're in full-on momentum over here, Dave. I'm having a blast. Uh, we're growing our mastermind rapidly. Uh, we ran our first um, cohort of our, our entrepreneurs course called Dynasty Defined. Uh, it was a sold-out course. It was fantastic. Uh, have developed a ton of really great relationships with other entrepreneurs, and I'm already seeing their businesses start to take off. I am just couldn't be more excited. We're looking to do three in-person mastermind summits this year, um, and I just am really excited about you know, basically everybody that I like to work with is, is climbing a mountain and I get to be the Sherpa that helps get them to the top of that mountain. So I'm excited to see a lot of mountaintops in 2023, Dave. Well, you know, as I look through the pod, through the, the, the whole website and, and everything kind of thing I like to do at the first of the year. Yeah. It, it's like, what's the, what's the thing at the top of the list. And I thought it was interesting how you put the podcast at the top of your your website for this year i'm sure there's a reason well i love podcasting as i mentioned earlier i think that um the nice thing about podcasting for me is and we we certainly do get leads and do monetize it in some way but it feels like it's just me being me talking to people that i'm interested in talking to um and so because of that like I said, I, I don't think I'll ever stop. I, I think I just am going to do it until I can't anymore. I really enjoy podcasting. Yeah, I think this is the way that people find the real behind what is out there. Um, we are so tired as a public of seeing the narrative that is scheduled, rehearsed, programmed, reading off of a script. And we can, we can all, hey, you know what? We're not dumb. We can tell when somebody's reading off a script. Yeah. I mean, the biggest pieces of content in the world are coming from unscripted, authentic, not, not reality TV, but like authentic. Right. So you think Joe Rogan, uh, you think there's a guy named Mr. Beast that has a hundred million views for every video he drops. Uh, and this is just a 24 year old guy yeah. you know, that's out there making fun videos. Uh, TikTok is bigger than, than MTV. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, I think there is something to be said about authenticity, authenticity, um, and how much people relate to it. And I think this would have been the case many years ago if the technology had existed. It just didn't. And so, you know, we were, we marched to the beat of the drum that was available to us. And, and now those days have passed. Well, you know, folks, here we are. We're two guys that have listened to a different beat. We're, you know, we're, we're even beating the drum ourselves. Yeah, they call they call my generation. It's like a very small window between like millennium and and uh, millennials and Generation X. Um, they call it uh, the lucky ones because I spent up until high school. I never had a cell phone. I never had a pager. I had internet, but kind of barely. You remember, you know, mid nineties. Oh yeah, AOL uh, dial up. Yeah, I had that. Um, but then and then have then seen as it, in my young twenties, like the the iPhones and the iPads and all of the stuff now that's happening, which is super exciting. Um, but because of that, you know, I think we have a, a richer understanding of like what it means to have lived and grown up and come of age without it, and then now to you know add it to our life. I watch my daughter Lucy, who's only eighteen months, and man, she is learning stuff. It's it's she might as well be a cyborg. She's already learning how to you, engage with these things uh, in a little bit at a time. Now you know that there are there is uh, information out there that says Lucy will never drive a day in her life. Never have yeah. a driver's license. As somebody who drives three stick shift cars, Dave, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, there is there is studies out there and there's people that saying uh, these children that are being born today will never have a driver's license and never drive. Man, I, I, I'll tell you this. I, I got a I got a 69 Bronco downstairs that she will learn how to drive at one point. <laughs> I promise you that. But maybe maybe not in her own personal life, but she's going to learn how to drive that truck. Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it right here, folks. Jason is going to make sure Lucy understands. Um, there's one, there's a couple of questions I ask every new guest that comes on our podcast. So, uh, uh, and I didn't find the, the answers out in our conversation. So I have to ask them. Let's do it. Where were you born? I was born in Culpeper, Virginia. And that's all he's going to give us, folks. So you oh, just I, have to go with that. Know, that, that, so that was I, the end of that. Would you see how he cut that? I just right answered off? the question. Yeah, I, I, I moved when I was very you. young. I'm not going to add anything to okay. it. <laughs> so as we started 23, what is on your personal, not business, not family, personal bucket list for Jason? 
150 jujitsu classes this year. I, I, well, I wasn't ready for that one. Yeah, 150 jujitsu classes this year, and and I, I kept out the second one because it was family, but uh, 36 date nights. Wife, get ready. He's coming. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> Jason, it's been good to have you on. Uh, folks, you've been able to see his scroll down at the bottom. Jason, for those that are listening to the podcast, how can they get hold of you, where, when, and all that good stuff? Absolutely, Dave. So first of all, thank you for having me on. And second of all, if you're listening to this right now, it's because you love Dave and you love Beyond Cleaning with Ace. And so go to his page, like it, subscribe it, and share it with a friend because he's putting a lot of work and to come up with a really great episode for you guys every single time. Um, if you still have energy after that, uh, you can find Spear and Clover podcast on any of the audio platforms or video platforms that you're engaging with right now. Uh, you can find me at jason at spearandclover.com for email. Um, our website is spearandclover.com. Check us out there. We have free resources for entrepreneurs, uh, as well as we offer a free test drive of our mastermind, which meets every single Friday at 1 p.m. Central. Folks, we like the fact that you subscribe and uh, share our podcast channel. We also like uh, the fact that you are doing the same thing over on our YouTube channel with our podcast now. You can find those there. We're like everybody else. We're on all those social media channels. They'll be listed down below in the show notes, both on the audio and the video version. Also, I wanna remind you that one thing that we started for this year, we'll be doing every Monday afternoon at 2.30, we're live on the air with Cleaning with the Academy. Give you a one minute hack for commercial cleaning, and then a one hour free live coaching session. Bring your cleaning question, whatever it might be, Every Monday afternoon, 2.30 Eastern time, I'm right here on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube Live. Jason, been great having you on. Hopefully, uh, hey, you're always welcome to come back on the show whenever you ding my bell. Well, thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate you having me on, and I'd love to take you up on that sometime. Talk to you all later, folks.